Today on the couch, we're having a conversation about love languages and fight languages. Nadia and I will dive into what fight languages are and why it's important to know yours and the fight language of those who you're in relationship with. So grab your cup of tea, your journal, and settle in, and let's dive into today's episode on the couch with Joy and Friends. Ski. If you see this tea, you want to see what's up. Ski. If you ask Joy to make you, you a cup. Ski. Ooh. 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 <laughs> I love tea. I love tea. Ski. <laughs> uh. Welcome back. Welcome back. <laughs> Welcome back. Hey, Ski. First up, stay. You gonna keep <laughs> Okay, y'all. So, y'all, we drinking tea, and Nadia is over here about to have a whole heart attack. <laughs> Okay, so my tea, let me tell y'all, because we're going to start, I, my autumn has my hair, uh, my lock technician, celebrity lock technician, um, told me to start introducing my teas of what I'm drinking because mm. people are really interested. So my teas are great. Um, and today I'm having a dandelion, roasted dandelion, mm. root tea, um, dandelion, the leaf, the actual flower, and I got some peppermint in here um, with a little... With nothing else, because I don't do honey. I was about to say with some honey, but I don't. Um, oh, where did it came from? Um, so yeah, drink your teas. Nadia got <laughs> ski. <laughs> that mug got lemon, ginger, and cayenne. She asked for the cayenne, so I gave her the cayenne. Um, she gave it. How's it? it how's right. it? How's it treating you? <laughs> My esophagus is on fire. <laughs> but the thing is, cayenne helps. Um, you can lose weight. The lemon definitely helps that as well as the uh, antibacterial. So make sure y'all drinking y'all teas and keeping everything regular because I got friends who use in the bathroom every three days and y'all know what I'm talking about. You're not supposed to be doing that. You're supposed to go every day. Three day, three times front to a back, day. Back to front. You're supposed to, be, you're supposed to be going. And tea has helped regulate all the things, okay? pH balance to the to the intestines, everything. Okay, so drink your teas and do your research. If you need some help, just hit my DM. I got you on some recipes for some good teas to help moving around. But welcome back to the episode, Tea God. And before we really get started, because we kind of already got started, ski and um, <laughs> and I want <laughs> I want y'all to subscribe to the channel. We have reached ten thousand subscribers, guys. Congratulations, Nadia. You got to know that. We did we 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 did 10,000 subscribers and it's, it. and it's because of you. <clears throat> That's why. Y'all have been sharing the videos, y'all have been subscribing, y'all have been pressing the buttons. Now we're getting a 20. That's the goal. That's the, the goal. Next 6 months. We're getting a 20 and it, and y'all are going to get us there cuz I believe in the tribe. Y'all have been rocking with us for the longest time. And now y'all are friends on the couch. You're not just supporters, you are a friend to us. Okay? So when I say the couch of joy and friends, I'm talking about you. You're the friend. Forever and always. Okay? Um, and I really appreciate y'all. So make sure y'all subscribe to the channel over and over again. Send this video to two people and make sure they subscribe so they can get this love every what? Tuesday and Thursday. Okay? Um, today, we're diving in <clears throat> to a beautiful topic and we're talking about love languages again. Okay? And not only that, we are going to introduce a new language, which is called fight languages. Y'all fight languages. Do you know how to fight within your relationships? Is it healthy? Is it not? And what type of fighter are you? And as, as much as we're learning about what our love language is, we have to know our fight language as well. And I'm still new to it, but I want to introduce what I, what I have learned and what I do know those, those fight languages to be. But before we start, we're going to talk about these love languages. And we know what they are. I hope y'all know what they are. And if you don't, here they are. Words of affirmation, quality time, receiving gifts, acts of service, and physical touch. Those are the five love languages. There are actually seven, appreciation, and I think, uh, I don't know the seventh one, but there are seven, um, two newer ones, and I'm sure it's way more than that once you really dig deep into the research. Um, and y'all know words of affirmation, that's when you're expressing love and appreciation through verbal 
affirmations, compliments, and encouraging words. And some people really love that. They need it. Okay. Quality time. Y'all already know what that is. <laughs> Quality time is about giving undivided attention. Come on, say it. Undivided. Let the church say undivided. Undivided, meaning it's all about me. Uninterrupted. Okay. And or, and or all about you. This is uninterrupted time, okay? And people who value quality time feel loved when they have your full presence and focus during conversations and shared activities, okay? Receiving gifts. What's that, Nadia? Tell us what receiving gifts. Buy your girl some. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Buy your girl some. Mm -hmm. or, your, or your man. Buy your man something. Yeah. Be nice. Be <clears throat> sweet. Be sweet. They want some gifts, too, now. Uh -huh. They want a little, little bag on the bed when he come home from work, too, now. Mm-hmm. Buy your man something. We done messed around and gave Nadia a doggone. It's up. Uh, it's what? <laughs> it's up. Uh, boy, you see. I can't take it. Okay, acts of service. A lot of people love acts of service, y'all. Do something for me. <laughs> That's what they saying. Do something for me. That can include cooking a meal, running an errand. If, I'm, if you see that I just got home from work and you talking about... Can you stop and get some spaghetti <laughs> when you can go and say, babe, just come home. I got it. That's right. an act of service um, and physical touch. Touch me, Lord Jesus. <laughs> touch me, Lord. What's touch me. What's my top three? Girl, they change per season. In this season right now. It would be. Words of affirmation, which has never been my thing. Mm -hmm. um, physical touch mm -hmm. and quality time, <clears throat> for sure. I think I need a combination of all of them right now. Uh -huh. Right now, I need all of them. Mm -hmm. and, but I'm, I'm open to giving all of them back. Like, mm -hmm. whatever you need, I, right now, I can <clears throat> be that. Mm -hmm. I'm, in a, I'm in a weird season, so I'm trying my and best to... Three more weeks, I don't mm -hmm. know where I might be. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. But right now, I need all of them. You need all of them? <clears throat> I don't necessarily, I don't know if I need all of them because I feel like with the three that I do have, they all kind of encompass everything that, I'm, that, I, that I desire and that I want. So, um, but I'm making sure that I give them to, I'm making sure in this season that it's not coming from someone, it's coming from me. Like, I'm really being intentional about me giving myself. Give myself away <laughs> so you can use me. <laughs> so I just, <laughs> I feel like. Stupid. I, I feel like I'm giving them, I want to give them to myself. I really do. Um, yeah, that's where I'm at with it. What's your three? Oh, you said all of them. You said mm -hmm. all of them. Okay, so. When it comes to loving someone in their love language versus your own, how you feel about that? I think that's important. I mm -hmm. think that's more important than anything because mm -hmm. I think what people do is they get with somebody and they're like, oh, I'm going to love him like this. And he keep fighting that thing mm -hmm. like, oh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do it. I'm going to go all out. I'm going to cook this lavish meal for this. And that man just want a sandwich and mm -hmm. he good. With sausage legs. And he's good. Mm -hmm. He more so wants you to say, babe, how was your day? Mm -hmm. Engage in some conversation, touch him, rub on him, make, make sure he good, you know. Mm -hmm. He wants that. He don't really care about this lavish meal that you just made. Mm -hmm. And he wants to know that he's appreciated. Like, babe, thank, you know, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for taking care of us. Thank you for providing for us. Like, he, he might want that. So <clears throat> I think we get caught up with what we like and just assume that what, that's what the other person mm -hmm. likes. And it can be complete opposite. For sure. And sometimes it's the same. And sometimes we don't know how to give what we've never gotten. Mm -hmm. Or what isn't ours. Right. So, and I just think sometimes, you know, we, we've gotten conditioned to this way of, of navigating through relationships where I think we should... Because I, I know nobody taught me how to be in a relationship, right? Like, they didn't say, so when you get with this man, you got to make sure that you find out what he likes. And make sure that when you give a gift, that it's actually a gift that he likes. Because I know for a fact, I have some friends that, well, man, I bought my wife this uh, this thing. And she just, 
She said, thank you, but she just kept it moving. And I was like, because you wanted a gift. She didn't want no gift. And it's kind of like, <clears throat> if you do not know your person's love language and you don't know how to navigate through that, you will think that you're doing something wrong every time. You try to show some love. You try to do this, that, and the other. And it's like, no, nah, that was really for you but to a lot get of a people, response. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm going to say. A lot of people give from a place of ego mm -hmm. instead of a place of love. Yeah. So you're, And we do it with our kids. All the time, mm -hmm. actually. We do it like, oh, man, I'm finna go in for my baby's birthday. Mm -hmm. Baby just want to go in the backyard and play with and friends. And jump on the trampoline. That's it. With their friends. Mm -hmm. They don't want no role, nothing. They don't want none of that. They, mm -hmm. they don't want nothing lavish. Mm -hmm. They might later on, but. For sure. Because my son like them Legos. Them things was expensive. I love you. Son. They are very They're expensive. They're expensive. Yes, they are. And I'm thinking I'm finna go on Walmart and just. No. Nah. Mm -mm. And definitely don't go to Legoland. Oh, I'm not. We're not broke. going to Legoland. You broke. Yes. So I, I definitely um, think it's important for us to start finding out, even in your friendships, find out what their love language is, um, not in just romantic relationships, platonic as well. What do you like? What do you need to feel appreciated? What you need to feel seen? Write that down in your journals. What do I need to feel seen and feel loved to be heard? OK, and start giving that to yourself first sometimes, y'all. Don't look for somebody else to keep doing stuff for you when you are well capable of spending time with yourself, undivided attention to yourself, giving yourself the gift that you worked you 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 worked hard. So go buy yourself the watch that you uh, want. Hello, Rolly. You know all the things. Um, and and I think it creates. Once you start noticing, like, okay, my partner likes quality time, you start giving that, whether you like to or not. Um, dang, how do you do that, though? If you don't want to spend no quality time. You have to, because being in a relationship, in any relationship, business or otherwise, it's a healthy give and take. For sure. No matter what. <clears throat> Let me just say this. On business, it might not be a healthy give and take. You might give more than you get back. Mm -hmm. But in a relationship, for sure. Um, platonically and intimately, mm -hmm. I would say. It's an exchange of healthy give and take. You can't just, oh, we girl, that's my girl, that's my friend, mm -hmm. and you never show up for her. Mm -hmm. But she's always there every time you having a meltdown or you for need sure. to talk in the middle of the night, she right there. Like, you can't, you can't just not be available. Mm -hmm. Or if you ain't available, at least communicate that. But don't just not be available. I can um, see that. It's just <clears throat> sometimes, like, I know... People out there do not like touching. <laughs> Some people just don't. They were not brought up to be affectionate. They weren't brought up to be, let, let me hold your hand in public. Let me do this, that, and the other. Um, and it's, it's important for a person to literally learn. If you say, I want to be in a relationship with somebody, you become responsible <laughs> for doing the work on yourself to make sure you can give What's, what needs to be given in that relationship. Um, so if you don't like touching, but your person loves touching, it might not work if you don't start touching. It's, it, it might not work. So you got to do that self inventory on yourself and figure out and why see if you're I willing to, to give that. And see if you're willing, you're really mm -hmm. willing to give that. Mm -hmm. Give up that part like, man, I don't want and don't, and don't give it up to like in a resentful way. And then way. you be like this. <clears throat> right. Right. <laughs> Man, I touched you last night, man. <laughs> Get off me. Get off me. Be good with that. Like, don't give it up in a resentful way. Mm -hmm. Like, you feel like it's a burden to, for you right. to do that. If you feel that way, then it, mm -hmm. that ain't for you, my boy. I got you. Okay, so y'all, start finding out your love language. Let's do the work internally on ourselves to make sure that we're giving it to ourselves so we're able to pour into someone else, okay? Um, so let's, let's move. Smooth. To these fight languages, y'all. <clears throat> do you know the, the, I wrote down the five that I was researching. And if you got some different ones, you can say those. Because it might be more than five. Okay? So, fight languages. If you do not know your fight language. Do you even know what a fight language is? I just learned what a fight language is. Tell the people. <clears throat> Here's the definition. Oh, the definition I don't know. I just oh, okay. know how to explain it. 
Well, ex explain it the best way you can. Um, fight language is when you're in altercation mm -hmm. or confrontation, mm -hmm. how you respond to that confrontation okay. to that other person. Got you. And I real in my research, I found that there are five ways, five fight languages. Okay, the first one is attacking, defensive, withdrawal, suppression, then overexpression, and mediation and open. Okay, which one are you? Do you know which one you are? And then we can. Do you want me? Or I can. I can. Let me break down all of them, and then we'll talk about which one. Okay. Okay. So attacking, attacking or blaming language involves verbally attacking the other person during a conflict. It includes using aggressive or curse words. Y'all cussing at me, <sighs> criticizing their character or bringing up past mistakes. Attacking language often aims to make the other person feel at fault or responsible for the issue at hand. I don't do no attacking. I'm really loving, so that ain't me. But how you feel about that? So if y'all attacking, attacking y'all people, relax, relax. <clears throat> and it's important to know your the fight attack. language. If you know that I attack when I what when I'm in a conflict, we gotta work on that. It's something to work on. Okay. How you feel about that? I've dealt with that. For real. Uh huh. It's. <clears throat> it's hard to deal with mm -hmm. um, when a person automatically thinks that it's a fight. Mm -hmm. And all I said was, you you don't want to put those shoes on? <laughs> Not shoes. And it was just a suggestion. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And you fly off the handle like, mm -hmm. I think it wouldn't be so, I think if I didn't internalize it, mm -hmm. it wouldn't be such an annoyance to me. But, <clears throat> excuse me, I learned that the, that fight language comes from things outside of me. Mm -hmm. And most people's responses to fighting aren't, they don't have anything to do with you. Mm -hmm. They have everything to do with who that person is and what happened before you. Mm -hmm. And now this is how I fight. Or this is how I start a fight. Mm -hmm. Or how or, I've always or this seen. is how I just respond. Yeah. That turns into a fight. Mm -hmm. But attacking, definitely. Um, that's crazy that yeah. people do that. That That is, that's crazy. Mm -hmm. So write that down, y'all. Right, I want y'all to write down all the fight languages that we mentioned today and do some self-inventory when we're done on which one is your fight language. Where do you go when it's time to resolve a conflict or a conflict arises or the hard conversation is in front of you? How, how are you responding? Um, and attacking is just, I hate it. Me too. Because it's like... Because when you attack, you're going to Wait, wait. You coming, but you, you also got to be, re be ready and responsible for how this person responds <clears throat> back because they're sure. going to attack back in Not most cases. Sure. They're going to attack back. Mm -hmm. It depends on the pit, but like this, like we learn it sometimes we might not. So defensive is the next one. <clears throat> defensive language is characterized by a person's attempt to protect themselves from perceived criticism or blame. It includes making excuses, denying responsibility or shifting the focus onto the other person's actions or, or behaviors. Defensive individuals may feel the need to justify their actions rather than engaging in open and honest converse, conversation and communication. Um, a lot of us go to the defense mm -hmm. in a conflict. Um, and it's best to, in conflicts, I, I just like to relax in it. And I try my best in the hard conversations to remain calm. <laughs> um, but the defensive person, it's, it's so hard to talk to them because they do not see. They cannot see past, I ain't defense. do that. I ain't do that. That ain't right. That ain't right. Listen to me. <laughs> like, and if your defense is up, there is no avenue open to you for change. Like, you can't see the positive. You can't see the light. You can't see any of that stuff when, you're, when your defense wall is up. Um, but it's important to know so when you get relationships, you can say, now my fight language is defensive. So when we have this conflict, I need you to know that where, where I am today. And start working on it. Start working on it. What show, have think, you ever experienced yeah. that? <clears throat> Excuse Nadia, me. that ain't me, not. 
I've de- it's a combination of both of those, mm-hmm. attacking and defensiveness mm-hmm. together. Wear you out. We're wear oh, you be out. Oh, you're draining them up. Wear you out. Um, but I also can acknowledge my defensiveness. Mm-hmm. Um, just and I think it comes from just a space of pride, where mm-hmm. you don't really want to receive what that person is talking about and say you're wrong, because you're wrong. Mm-hmm. I've been wrong, you know. Um, so I think. I think everybody got a little bit of defensiveness in their fight languages, in my mm-hmm. opinion. Because, yeah, I can feel it a little bit in me now. Like, <laughs> it hurts, though. It, it hurts to accept. It mm-hmm. hurts because it makes the now the mirror is back on you. But then, too, it's like I don't really consider my, my language as defensive only because I'm solution-based. So I would... Even if I do feel it a little bit, I've been on this spiritual journey so long that I instantly know how to switch from the immaturity part of it to what you did. In the moment, though, mm-hmm. it happens in the moment. It's not a, I ain't do that. No, I did that. But, and, I'm, and I apologize. But we also do have to learn, too, like, when we say, yeah, I did that, but it shouldn't be no but behind mm-hmm. it. And we be having butts behind it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I did it, but it's no but. You mm-hmm. did it. Mm-hmm. So now we address what you did, not the reason why you did it. It's mm-hmm. the re- let's, go ahead, let's address the action, gotcha. not the reason why you mm-hmm. did it. And that is hard. For sure. <laughs> For sure. In every situation, because it's like, huh. Huh. Well, I did it, but you pissed me off. <laughs> you know, you... I ain't mean to call you that. But, but you, you said. You, but yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, so it should be. So what should it be? It yeah, should I, be, did yeah I did that. And, and I apologize. And that's it. Got it. Got it. And that is very hard uh-huh. to do because you really want to justify your action and you can't. <laughs> I got it. So y'all, let's cut the butt sock <laughs> and just make it an and. I did that and. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I apologize. I we, did we that, it. and I'll work on it mm-hmm. the next time. I will do the work. I did that, mm-hmm. and I'll be mindful next time mm-hmm. not to do the same thing. Mm-hmm. Ooh, that thing hurt, boy. <laughs> so, yeah, if your thing is defensive, happy journeys <laughs> to you. <laughs> do the work. Do the work. That's all I can say. Okay, <clears throat> number three. Now, this is mine's. This is the one that resonates. <laughs> this yeah, to my heart. This one resonates with me the most. Withdrawal. Oh, yeah. Okay. Withdrawal occurs when a person emotionally disengages or physically removes themselves from the conflict situation. They may become silent, refuse to participate in the discussion, or physically leave the environment. Withdrawal can be an avoidance strategy to escape the discomfort of the conflict, but it often leaves the other person feeling ignored or dismissed. Mm-hmm. That's me. That's me. 100%. 100 percent. One hundred. That's probably a thousand percent me. One point three million percent me. Because I'm, I'm not I'm gonna gone. do it. I don't want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> want to do it? Uh, what's what Bob say? I'm gonna go head to head out. Uh huh. Gonna... And that's so bad. It's so it's bad, horrible. and I know that it's bad. It's so bad. I will get the heck on on you, friend. And everything inside of me just turns off Mm -hmm. for sure. Um, And I learned, like, when I was researching it, I was like, oh, that's me. Ouch. (laughs) Dang. Oops. Like, oops, my bad. Because I really think... Who like after after a few of the same conversations, my body just kind of go numb to whatever's happening, and emotionally, I'm like I'm done. I don't want to really talk about it, even if it's a heightened conversation. I just so oh, okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's me. It's me, and I will hold everything in, just hold it there. So the next time, then it come out. Even it might even, it, but that <clears throat> next time may take me a year or so yeah. to even speak up for whatever I felt because it's easier for me as a withdrawal person. I feel like it's easier to You feel like it's helping you avoid the conflict. Yeah, like we ain't got to, we ain't got to talk about it. And and, and nine times out of 10, I think people who withdraw have 
express themselves to the point where it's always something negative coming back at them once they express themselves. And then it's like, I don't want to express yeah, because myself you feel, no more. Yeah, <laughs> that's because you feel unheard. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or you feel like this issue that I keep talking to you about is not being addressed in that moment. So I don't want to talk about it no more because I've told you this 17 mm -hmm. times and now this is time number 18 and I'm good. Yeah. And, and it's really about the support that happens for people who side. withdraw. It's that defensiveness. It's that everything else when it's like, no, I'm just trying to tell you what's up. Like that, the attack and the defensiveness don't help with a person that's a, that withdraws. It'll, it'll fight. take us further back into the cave, you and go, then you got to come find us to see. Like, because after a while, you're gonna be like, where'd she go? <laughs> she don't talk no more now. Now she don't say nothing, and now everything is just very passive. Um, that's tough. Mm -hmm. That's. It, and it's hurtful to both sides because mm -hmm. once you withdraw, now they feel neglected. Mm -hmm. But it's like you keep attacking me and you keep defending everything mm -hmm. when there's nothing for you to defend. We're just right. really having some healthy mm -hmm. dialogue. But now you feel like just because I brought up an issue that you need to defend it mm -hmm. automatically. There's nothing to defend. I'm not, I'm not coming at you. Girl, We're on the, word. the same team. I think when people, man or woman, realize that if you're in a partnership with somebody, that is your partner. They are not, a, they are not the ops. Mm -hmm. They aren't. They aren't. You cannot treat them like the ops. No matter how you feel about it, they are not the ops. Unless they show you they the ops. Mm -hmm. But if they're coming at you from a place of love mm -hmm. and they're talking to you out of love and you know genuinely that that's what they're doing, yeah. you cannot take it as an attack. And you can't be defensive. At all. Or it's never going to work. Mm -hmm. Y'all going to keep doing this. Yep. Over and over again. At what point do you be like, okay, let me just... But I think, like, and that's what this episode is going to help us do, come come together, because sometimes we don't know the fight language and we don't know who we really fight with. And it's important to know for yourself, because now after I did the research, I was like, dang, I withdraw. Okay, so I go into my shell. That means... I'm going to have to start coming out the cave and just kind of standing 10 toes down into into whatever in it is. In the conflict. Yeah. You have and, to stand in it. Mm -hmm. And it's hard. I'm I'm literally going through that right now, like standing in the conflict. Mm -hmm. um, I don't like it. <laughs> it it's the worst <laughs> I don't like ever. it at all. But I think it's Ooh. it's helping with growth because it, sure. it makes me be like, okay, well, if I went, I got, now I got through this. All right, the next time, it mm -hmm. might be a little bit easier when yeah, I do sure. it. And the next time, I ain't going to leave. Mm -hmm. Or the next time, I ain't going to go in the room. Or I ain't going to walk away. I'll sit here, and now we can talk. Mm -hmm. But it's, ooh, ooh, it's rough. But the other Dang. person has to do the work, too. Like, it For can't sure. just be the man or the woman just being mindful and, and intentional about their fight languages. Mm -hmm. Both of y'all have to be, all right, I know this is how I am. Let me at least try to turn it yeah. down today mm -hmm. so that she don't walk away. Because, And then be mindful that when I holler and scream and I'm defensive and I'm, and I'm attacking, she's going to walk away. Mm -hmm. For sure. So be also responsible for your actions that created a reaction. Mm -hmm. All that. It's rough out here, boy. <laughs> In these relationship streets, okay? Because you really got to think about the other person. You really have and to love intentionally mm -hmm. every day, mm -hmm. all day. And it ain't no fairy tale. We're conditioned to think that love is this fairy tale. These relationships are fairy tale based where they just always work out and don't nobody want to do the hard work. And I'm in this this episode, I hope it helps y'all realize that there are parts of you that need to be worked on. And I'm hoping, you know, we I'm gonna sip on the withdrawal because it hit my spirit. Cause I don't like no conflict, y'all. I and I and the thing is, I I like to talk about it, but my spirit, even if I'm talking to you, my in my spirit, there's still this little girl that go in the cave and go, we ain't gonna talk about it. We're gonna leave that part out, and I'm gonna work on it. But that's because that comes from not being heard. Mm -hmm. 
and being tired of not being heard. Ti say the word again, tired. Ti yeah. It's tired. Because if you know, it, it's just a natural reaction when somebody gives you a safe space to speak your mind and speak your emotions and speak your feelings, you naturally want to keep talking to that person. Mm -hmm. You naturally want to confide in this person. Mm -hmm. But if this person becomes a brick wall every time you come, I ain't going to be able to go over there and talk to you about mm -mm. that. Not at all. Yeah. So, um, y'all, we're not going to withdraw. We're not going to be aggressive. We're not going to be defensive. We're going we gonna to learn that this is us. That's number one. Just like we learned our love languages and what those are, we're going to love our fight. We're going to learn our fight languages and we're going to figure out how that works within a relationship. And two, let's start having these conversations when we meet people. Let's not get a two years into the relationship and we just start learning what these things are. Um, do the work, do the work, do the work. Okay, number four, it, the fourth, um, the fourth language is fight language is suppression then over expression. This pattern involves suppressing one's emotions during a conflict, bottling up their feelings and avoiding confrontation in the moment. However, over time, these suppressed emotions can build up and eventually lead to an explosive or intense outburst. This cycle of suppression followed by overexpression can create an unhealthy and unpredictable dynamic in relationships. So is that you? Are you suppressing for a year and then start to overexpress? Not too much. <laughs> Not too much. So it's. And I've been on the receiving end of that. Of suppressing? Uh, yeah, like where, where I don't know something's wrong. Mm -hmm. And then all of it just come out at once. And then I've been on the other end where I withdrew. Mm, suppressor. And then, but see, I, I don't know if I overexpress. I think I just withdraw and then calmly express later. Like, no, I'm Do you calmly? That. Do you calm? You can say you can be calm in expressing it, but do you overexpress me? I don't keep think going. I don't think I overexpress. I do. You do? Yeah, because once I done suppressed it for a long time, now I got a whole lot to say. Yeah, I don't. Maybe the word. Yeah, I, I I can't resonate with that one all the way because I feel like I give a little bit at a time. Now, do I talk about it every day? No, but it, we're, it, along the journey, might, I'm gonna say. I might hey. unload the whole clip on you. The everything that. I have suppressed for this time frame. I'm going to unload it. But I'm like still not going to be... My delivery in unloading it is not in an attacking way. It's mm -hmm. not... It's just, a, to me, an informative way. Mm -hmm. So you're aware of these things. Mm -hmm. This is what happened. This is how I'm feeling since these things happened. But I don't think I... I don't think I... I I mean, if I know I don't attack. I'm not an attacker. Um, mm -hmm. That's just not in my nature to be that way. But if you keep attacking me, yes, then yes. Now I'm a lion. Um, this is the one that might hurt the most to me when I receive it. Um, it hurts the worst when, because I've been manipulated mm -hmm. in a lot of relationships where I would get flowers, I would get gifts, I would get all these things. And trips and we and once we get to the the island yeah so like two weeks ago you what two weeks ago you wait till we get to this beach does it want to be mad mm -hmm. like it's it's it, it, like i hate that mm -hmm. <laughs> and then i wish the butter you it's the butter you up for to unload on you type thing yeah like and in the in those type of games i just don't like to play yeah if you mad say you mad and if yeah. you said, say you said, hey, I don't like that. Don't take 10 weeks to say it. Because by nah, the time Because now for me, I done really forgot. It's almost like whooping a kid girl, a week later for them being bad in school yesterday. While I'm holding all the gifts you gave me. Well, how? Mama, I was bad last week. I've been good all this week. Uh, Why would you come spank me on Saturday mm -hmm. when I gave you a whole week of good conduct? Like yeah. that doesn't, it doesn't make sense in the, in our brain. That doesn't mm -hmm. make sense. You punishing me and, and rewarding me at the same time. I don't understand it's, that. It's the weirdest feeling so y'all do not confuse people start to express yourself and if this is you where you suppress you hold it in you um and and, and I want to say the difference between withdrawals withdrawal you really don't hmm you it's not a holding in of emotion I no, feel you like just almost it's almost the whole yeah, thing like, like disengage mm -hmm. I'm good bye and but you when you literally go to bed you're thinking about it 
you're with the person at dinner, you're thinking about it, but you're still smiling. You're, you're, nothing shows on your outer that you're upset, that you've been disrespected, that you've been betrayed. You just in there. Don't do that to yourself. And don't do that to the person that you giving these gifts to while you mad at them. Be honest with yourself and be like, no, that hurt and I don't like it. And as a withdrawal person, I'm probably not even going to say that. I'm just going to be like, all right, cool. Whatever you say. And hopes to come out the cave again because... Because that's crazy listen. because you say these things in hopes for them to be like, no, come here. Mm -hmm. And they never do. No. That's the bad part. And because it makes you go even further up in that cave. That's uh, wild. Yep. So, y'all, we not going to suppress. Help us a lot. <laughs> out in these relationship streets. Okay? Five. The fifth uh, fight language is med mediation and open communication. Mediation refers to a communication style where the focus is on finding a resolution through open dialogue and negotiation. It involves actively listening to both sides, encouraging empathy and understanding, and seeking a mutual satisfactory solution, okay? Meditation, I'm sorry, mediation <laughs> aims to create a safe space for open and respectful communication, fostering compromise, Whew and problem solving within the relationship. Now, I know a lot of us don't possess that one. <laughs> that would be me, though. Like, I try to mediate the situation first. I think that's girl, my, it, my number mm -hmm. one thing. I'm a mediator yep. first. It's, go, it's definitely going to be, and, I, and I'm not going to do signs, but I feel like Libras, um, because yeah, we, we hate conflict. Make, and we want to make sense out of yeah. everything. And, and, and I think our downside is that sometimes things just don't make sense. Especially to the other person. It makes sense, all the sense to us. It just doesn't but, make sense. Um, and I think the mediation and the sympathy, the empathy, the compassion, all the things come out in the first few conversations for me. Like, okay, so here we are. If this doesn't change, this is where I'll be. Hey, this is what I need. I need that. And once those things, once the, the soft conversations are happening, then that's when my withdrawal happens later on. Um, but I feel like I always start with mediation. Me too. Completely because I feel safe at, at that point. I feel like, okay, I can say this. But then once I don't feel when safe no more. The attack come and the everything. Ah, uh, yeah, I'm going to go to the other changes. one. Let me go to the other one. Yeah. So I think, I think this is one that we all should dive into because I'm telling you down, down, down. When I know when I meet a person that has the same fight language of, no, 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 no. What is it? Let me, let's fix it. I instantly... I breathe, I open up, and then the, the solutions are always there. It's not, I don't, I don't know about that. I can't do that. Once I hear those words, I cannot. I, I say, well, that's their side. Mine is I can do all things. <laughs> like, I can do everything I put my mind to. Ain't nothing too hard for no situation to me. Um, so those, that openness is something that I live for and to feel safe, and to feel like my, my thoughts matter, my feelings matter, um, and that you understand. And fellas, hear me out. Come on, fellas. <laughs> this is a cheat code for you all. No woman on the planet Earth wants to feel unheard. We have to feel heard and seen, okay? go and she said men but there are women who I was just about to say that because you know we y'all good we good we good at beat oh you just a man you, don't worry your feelings don't matter mm -hmm. I don't need to see you and that's not true mm -hmm. but I, I think it's more so for women that we need it mm -hmm. y'all appreciate it mm -hmm. we need it like now yeah mm -hmm. we need it to function it's, it's, yeah, we, we do. We do. And it's important for that safe space to be there so we can be feminine and be soft and be open to whatever, vice versa. No matter what type of relationship you in, whether that's, y'all know all the relationships, I can't name them all, but whatever you are, make sure your partner, make sure you're listening to your partner 
And before you can even listen to your partner, make sure you know what you want. How about that? How, how about you know what makes you happy? What makes you feel great? What makes, what turns you on? What are the things that you, who are you first, you know? And then we can start getting with people who match us versus people who are polar opposites and it just won't freaking click. OK, um, and these fight languages will help you along with your love languages. If you with somebody who don't want to touch you, stop asking. <laughs> Give like, you somebody that want to touch your little thigh. Hell. <laughs> you know, and, and these are things that these are conversations that a lot of people missed as an individual before they became one with somebody else. And as and, a kid, like growing mm, up, yeah. being cultivated and. I don't think nobody's culturally mm -hmm. parents really sat them down to condition them and cultivate them and train them and teach them how to exist in a relationship, mm -hmm. but only how to exist and survive in the world, mm -hmm. not in a relationship. Mm -hmm. That's sure. wild. Yeah. And the condition, because I think our conditioning for relationships came from Disney, the little movies, thinking, you know, the pillow princess. You know, laying down, and then he come kiss, and then you get up. Oh, he woke me. Right. It's and like he loved me. He loved me fly so me much. Away and it's just not that. No, it's not. It's work. It's work. It is work. It is work. And that that's important for us to really start diving into before we get into these relationships and learning people. Okay. So we're gonna develop some self awareness first. And then we're going to start diving into who we're doing life with and our partners, our lovers, our friends. OK, um, so thank you for this, man. Thank you, because I didn't even know what a fight language was. And it's just like, Joy, how do you fight? What happens when you fight? And is it healthy or is it not? And I'm learning that withdrawing. It feels so good to me. It feels so good to me. It doesn't feel good. I, I, I'll be in my cave and I feel I at home. I ain't even gonna lie. absolutely hate to have to withdraw. Okay, I hate to have to. But when I do, I feel protected. I feel yeah, safe. Yeah, you feel I protected. Feel all you the feel things. safe, right, because you're not dealing with that situation. But I don't like it. Don't want to be in that space. I don't want to be in this cave. I actually want you to come in here and get me up out of here. <laughs> Bring me out now, please. Mm. But and I don't dress my cave up. I got a fireplace. I got a little couch. I got tea. Yeah, you I got do all TV. of those things because now I, this has become your safe space. Yeah, so sure. you go in there to feel safe. Mm -hmm. But in the reality of it, I don't want to be here. Mm -hmm. I want you to get me up out of here. Mm -hmm. I, I want to be here. I want to be up here with you. Mm -hmm. Why we can't be great? <laughs> I just want to be great. I just want to be great. I just want to love on you. You love on me. We love on each other. That's it. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be over here existing in my own world because that's really what it is. Like I've mm -hmm. created this whole reality for myself for sure. to not have to deal with this really, this real reality. If I walk out of this cage, what's going to happen? Mm. I feel you. So we all going to do the work. It's tough, boy. We all going to do the work and I will work on, you know, in front of, in front of my friends. Cause we all sitting on the couch, have a girl talk. Uh, I'm going to work on the not withdrawing and, I think the best way to to put that is feeling safe and finding where I can, where I peep out and go, okay, it's cool. Look, the air is fine. But you have to really be intentional about it. Yeah. And the other person has to be intentional about doing said thing that keeps creating said action. Yeah. If you keep slapping her, do you think she's not going to keep walking away? Yeah. It's the same. It's a cycle. Mm -hmm. It's just a revolving door. Because one day, she might slap you back because she's tired of walking away. Yeah. Just move. You got to figure it out. Yeah. You got to figure it out. And you got to know your person. Like, if you really love your person, know your per Learn, study your person. It's literally a constant student-teacher thing sure. when you're in a relationship with somebody. I'm going to constantly teach you about me. Yeah. That's the, that's the part. I don't want to teach you how to love me. I want to show you the type of love that I need. And it's your responsibility to either see if that's something that works for you or move around. Mm -hmm. I don't think that, I, you know, people say all the time, you got to teach somebody how to love you. 
I'm going to show you how I need to be loved. Mm -hmm. You can love me that way <laughs> or you don't have to. Mm -hmm. Because some people, we really expect them to love us in a way that we want to be loved. And that's really not. They can't. Realistic at all. But they can't. They don't know how to. Mm -hmm. They're at their love capacity. Their love capacity is a level four. You need level eight. Go 30. get you somebody that, oh, level 30. 30. You, go get you somebody that's a level 30. Yeah. A level four, that's, all, that's where he at with it. Yeah, for sure. He can't love past that. Because he ain't get love past Come on. level four. And it's, and it's not to be hurtful to, to acknowledge that. It's, it's not shaming mm. nobody or shaming sure. nobody. It is just knowing that this is the capacity that this person is at. I'm not mad and at you. And knowing that for yourself. Like, this is where and I And accepting am. that. Mm -hmm. I'm not mad at you for being that way. In the beginning, it makes you mad. It makes you frustrated because you want this person in, in your life. And you mm -hmm. want them to love you how you want to be loved. But the truth is this person can't love you past level Four. You up here at 30. My boy can't even get past four. And, and reaching 10 is a, is a feat. Okay? 10? Oh, boy. That's rough. Yeah, so y'all, we got to do the work individually before we get into these relationships, okay? Um, so thank you, Nadia for fostering this safe space to talk about these languages. Love and fight. Mm. Um, because they all go hand in hand. And hopefully y'all have been writing <clears> stuff <throat> down as we've been talking and we can get to a place where we're navigating these relationships realistically and not fictionally. Because it's, it's, it's a lot of fake stuff going on. Hello. <laughs> and and married, you know, that's what we need to get somebody who's been married for like 50 years on this couch and really tell us what the deal is. How did they make it? Yes. They were different, Joy. They was different back in the day. So what we need, a younger couple? No. So what worked for them back in the day may not work for us. It don't. Because but our reality is not their reality. Back in the day was straight survival mode mm -hmm. for us. We ain't in that mode mm -hmm. now. Everything is at your beck and call. You can Uber groceries. You can... Mm -hmm. Uber a woman. You can you That's can true. you can order a man or a woman online. You can get on the internet and look at people interact sexually. You can everything is literally at our fingertips. Mm -hmm. When back in the day, people had to face each other. Mm -hmm. You mad? You still bringing your black behind back to this house, and I'm still gonna cook you dinner, mm -hmm. and we still gonna take care of these kids, and we're still gonna do all of mm -hmm. these things, and you're gonna love it. And you better love it. <laughs> but you didn't have really the option to leave. Like back in the day, they was raising kids that didn't belong to them. That's true. Women was like, that's oh, true. your husband stepped out and had a baby. All right, I'm bringing a man. I ain't going nowhere. I'm not leaving my man. Today you have a baby on me. I'm out the door. That's true. Period. That's true. That is different. They didn't have to deal with n most of what we deal with today. And then it don't help for us to have the influence of social media to where you see that you can have four or five, six, don't nine men at one time. Mm -hmm. and, you, and you got a man at home and this man don't even say good morning to you, but it's a man in your DM every day saying good morning, good morning beautiful. beautiful. <laughs> what? Or it's a woman yes. telling that man, good, good morning, king. Mm -hmm. Know your worth, king. Mm -hmm. And he going home to you and you won't even get up and make this man a sausage sandwich, mm -hmm. an egg sandwich. Mm -hmm. Like you... For it's sure. so different. We So do you think because it's that different, because they were in survival mode, I still feel like at the at the root or the core of great relationships that there are gems that can be deposited. It's in definitely this gems from that generation to now that can be deposited, which is the fight, mm -hmm. not flight. Mm -hmm. We flighting all day. We flighting. I'm going to marry you and I'm going to divorce you tomorrow. That is what our generation is. Them they people definitely have a two-year minimum these days. Correct. But back in the day, For these sure. people was married till they died. They, listen, happy or not. But we're not saying stay. We're definitely not, happy. not saying it. But However, I'm just saying they, they had more fight in them. Yeah. And they had far less than what we have today. Like, For sure. They had so much less than what we had today, and they was willing to fight through and be okay with these things. Yeah. We have, just because we have so much at our fingertips, we want it all. We expect it all. 
it is crazy that we almost feel entitled to it all. Mm. But are you are you gonna be mad at your man because he's a great man and he loves you down? He treats you the best, mm -hmm. but this man he work all the time. Mm -hmm. Or you want you a man bust you upside your head oh. every day. No. Cuss you out. No. But give you everything you want, mon uh, monetarily, materialistically. Mm -hmm. Like, what do you, what do you want, you know? Like, where do you go? Do you just be okay with this person that is a healthy love for you mm -hmm. and then doesn't possess some of these little things that you really could live without? You just want them. Mm -hmm. But this person gives you everything you need monetarily, materialistically. To me, I'm going to go on the left. I don't need that. Mm -hmm. I need you to be. Because you can't bust me outside my head. It's not going to happen. You can't do any of those mm -hmm. things to me. But th that's, what, that's what we're dealing with right, yeah. with right now. And them, these ladies back in the day was getting it out the mud with their man. Not sitting home trying to be a pillow princess and want to get taken care of while this man goes slave. And then when he get home, you need him to fix something around the house. After he just finished working, a hundred hours, you need him to fix something around the house and you won't even get up and make sure this man got a hot plate of food when he walk in the door. I got you. So or wash his work clothes. So it's a give and take, and we ain't, and we All ain't. All day And you long. feel like this generation is not that. This generation, a lot of us, is just take. Mm. And the, girls, getting, the girls do want the bag. It's they only do. the bag. The only, <laughs> and, and, a, and a man that look good standing next to them. Mm. And men, too, they want a woman that look good standing next to them. And then when you get that woman that just look good standing next to you, then you want to complain because she don't cook and she don't clean. Well, sir, you sought out a woman just because she had a big booty and a pretty face. Mm -hmm. And she had a bad, too. You went after that. Don't feel like you need some substance. Nah, sir. You wasn't seeking the substance when you went out there and looked for her. I need the substance. Want. Show me substance on day one. I need to know how you take care of your kids, how you talk to your kids. Mm -hmm. I need to talk to women. You mm -hmm. know your relationship between you and your mama, your relationship between you and your daddy. Mm -hmm. Now I know who you are. Mm -hmm. And your love language. And, and your that, fight language. All of that. We need to I know need all to know that. all of these sure. things. And, and of course, you ain't going to learn it all in one conversation. You ain't going to learn it in the first two years of, of being with this person. Mm -hmm. You learn this over time, but that person got to be in a space to where they're willing to allow you to see these parts of them. For sure. And then now you take this information and like, okay, cool. Now I know how to deal with you. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I feel like that, that moment of mm, now I know how to deal with you, I'm learning that that takes years. Yes. Years of... Two months, no, I don't know you. Two Three months, years, no, two I years, don't know you. I still don't really Listen. for real know you. Because I ain't did one thing mm. that will send you to wherever this dark side is mm -hmm. that I ain't get the experience yet. But I just walked in the house and boom, stepped on your foot on accident. And somebody been stepping on your foot as a kid. You done flew off the handle and knocked me upside and the head. And then you go, whoa, wait a minute. It was an accident. Who was that? Right. <laughs> but, mm-hmm. Some things you just ain't experienced yet. Yeah. So it ain't, don't think that it ain't in that person or this person. It, you ain't did nothing to bring it out of them. That's true. It, or life ain't did. Life it. ain't lifed enough for them to turn into yeah. this person. Because I've seen a man go from being the sweetest person, the most giving person, to the nastiest, rudest person, all because his finances changed. Girl. Not that I changed. That's a Not whole that other I treated episode. him any differently. There's a whole nother one. Because they get, they turn into a different being. Yeah, but and, and it don't even be it don't even be your partner some most times. It is just in their head that mm -hmm. I'm not doing enough for me. Mm -hmm. And so then you can't fight them like, well, mm -hmm. you just have to be a support system because really that's all you can that's be it. when they're that determined to be otherwise. Mm -hmm. It's uh, well, listen. That's mm -hmm. a whole nother comment. We can, you can keep going. It's the tea. <laughs> it's the cayenne in her tea. It got a it got a hot. Got me <laughs> riled up. I'm ready to go. So, y'all, but we got to go. We got to wrap it up. Okay. Thank y'all. Thank y'all for tuning in to this beautiful episode. I hope something was said that helps you um, navigate through relationships a bit more health, healthy, okay, or healthier, whatever the word is. Um, so, no matter what you do, no matter what you blow, 
poor, no matter where you glow, stink. <laughs> There's always room for you right here on the couch by I'm Nadia's on, leg. I'm on my feet. By her legs. Yes. So thank you though, Nadia. I love you. I love you more. Gang, gang. See y'all later. Uh, yeah, yeah.